Pokemon Champions are iconic characters within the Pokemon world and the main series games, because they are literally the final boss. They are the strongest trainer you will face within the main story of a game, and therefore many of them have become some of the most popular and beloved characters in the series. But there's one champion that's actually missing from this equation, one that canonically is a part of the lore of the main series games, but we never got the chance to see them and battle them as a champion. In today's video, I'm going to explain who this mystery champion is, and then reveal to you who I believe they most likely are. And the answer might just blow your mind. First, let's get into the concept of the missing champion itself. As we know, every Pokemon region has a Pokemon League. Most have an Elite Four, and all have a champion that you will face as the final battle in order to become champion yourself. However, there's one extra champion in this equation that kind of gets overlooked, and that's the original Kanto champion. I've brought this up in another video in the past, but basically, we can say with virtual certainty that prior to Blue, there was another Kanto champion that held the title. We know this because unlike somewhere such as Alola, where the League was just barely being established, Kanto is a region with an already established Pokemon League. Before you even begin your adventure, there are 8 gyms set up for you to face, an Elite Four is waiting for you at the Indigo Plateau, and therefore, a champion would have already been crowned too. We face Blue as the champion, or Trace in the Let's Go games, because they simply completed the league faster than we did. It wasn't a case of there just being no champion whatsoever and they took up the empty spot, because we know the league was already established and up and running at the start of the Kanto games. Therefore, it can be assumed that a champion was there too, which Blue and or Trace would have to beat to become champion themselves. Meaning that by the time we reach them as the player, this former champion has already left the building, and we don't get to see who they are. There isn't any dialogue or mention of this former champion either, the games don't go into this at all, but as I have explained, they do imply the existence of one, and knowing that there is a former Pokemon League champion out there who we have never seen before, just gives you the itch to discover who it might be. So, now that we've established that there is a missing Kanto champion out there, where do we begin as far as identifying who it is? Literally, all we have to go on is the implication that this character exists. So, could there even be any evidence out there of who this is at all? Well, yes, actually. Personally, I am pretty well convinced that Professor Kukui could have been the original Kanto champion, and there are several compelling reasons why this is the case. Firstly, the Alola games and the region have a very strong connection to Kanto. The player character is originally from Kanto, Professor Oak's cousin is from Alola, some of Alola's towns were settled by people from Kanto, Lusamine and Lily travel to Kanto at the end of the Alola games, and there's even a Kanto-style gym in Alola. So, if Game Freak were wanting to have a character from the Alola region be the original Kanto champion, it's not a stretch at all to believe that it could be feasible. Second, in the original Sun and Moon, Professor Kukui acts as the de facto champion that you face in order to gain the title of champion yourself. He isn't officially the champion, because when you beat him, the game states that you are the first Alola champion, but instead, he's more like a stand-in. He's someone that you have to face in order to earn the title for yourself, so it's not just handed to you. Whether official or not, though, that's a pretty big deal, and what exactly would give Kakui the authority, let alone the battling ability, to be able to assume that kind of position? 
Well, being a former champion of the Indigo League in Kanto is the perfect credential for something like this, making the idea all the more plausible. Finally, I have saved the best for last, and in my opinion, this is the final nail in the coffin, if you will, that convinces me that Kakui is probably this lost former champion. In Pokemon Sun and Moon at Mount Lanakila, just before you go off and face the Elite Four, Professor Kukui meets up with you and says the following. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I went all the way to Indigo Plateau. Yeah, right to the Pokemon League headquarters, and I went right at them, cousin. Those gym leaders in Kanto really messed my team and me up, but then I saw my team battling for me through it all, pouring their souls into their moves for me. And then that last guy, that dragon user in the cape. This is a huge revelation in favor of this idea because it confirms that not only has Kukui been to Kanto, but that he's also taken part in the league there, battling gym leaders and even making his way to the Indigo Plateau to battle the Elite Four for a chance at becoming the champion. He even implies that he made it as far as Lance when he makes reference to him. So we can, without a shadow of a doubt, at the very least, put him right on the champion's doorstep before we even begin to theorize at all. And with all the other factors in play here that I've already mentioned, it seems very likely, in my opinion, that Professor Kukui was actually the first canonical Kanto champion, the one that Blue and Trace would have faced and then eventually defeated in order to become champion themselves. As well as all of this fits together, though, it does bring about a question of timing. Pokemon Sun and Moon take place about 20 years after Pokemon Red and Blue, and that's a long time. So could Professor Kukui really have been old enough to be the Kanto champion 20 years before Sun and Moon and right before the events of Red and Blue? Well, once again, the answer is yes, and the timeline actually fits perfectly, making this theory even more convincing. If we look at Professor Kukui, he looks young as far as Pokemon professors go. And while his age hasn't been directly confirmed, if I had to personally eyeball it, I would say that Kukui is probably around his mid-30s. In order to verify this though, we can actually look at the older versions of Red and Blue from Sun and Moon for comparison, who we know would be around 30 at this time. Compared to Kukui, they look like they're roughly in the same age range. Kukui might look a little older thanks to the facial hair, but not by much, which again would put him in his mid-30s. This means that Kukui would have been around 15 at the time of Red and Blue when he theoretically would have been Kanto's champion, which is not only a feasible age for a Pokemon League champion, considering the 10-year-olds become champion all the time in this world, but it's even in the optimum range that would make this seem the most plausible, because 15 is in that age range when people are most often becoming new trainers and taking on the Pokemon League. And it also would have made him a little older and therefore a little more mature and experienced than Trace and Blue would have been at the time, which just helps to make him that much more legitimate of a champion. And as far as traveling from Alola to Kanto at just 15 years old, well, if Ash can do it at 10, and we have people in the games like Red and Ethan and Silver who can also travel from region to region at around the same age, then I think Kukui can definitely do it at 15. And altogether, this convinces me pretty decisively that Professor Kukui is indeed this mysterious, unseen Kanto champion. What do you guys think, though? Do you feel like this is plausible, or are you thinking something else? Let me know in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and if you want to support the channel, check out my Spotify. It really does help out. 
with that said, I'll be back with another video very soon. And until then, as always, thanks so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. And I will smell you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.